Um, I want to say thank you to everybody, particularly newcomers who are with us for the first time this morning. Uh, we really appreciate you being here. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that's excellent that, that we have so many people on this morning. Um, as I said, our normal announcements will come afterwards and acknowledging candidates, at, at, et cetera. But we have a, a fantastic day. We've gone through a fantastic week. It, it's a historic week. You know, it just etch it into your memories, pass it on to your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. To this week, we saw that strong black woman, our vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris, conducting the Senate vote to confirm a brilliant judge, another great strong black woman, Katanji Brown Jackson, as associate justice of the US Supreme Court. Just fantastic to, you know, th this week is just about as great as you can have it for, for that. But now let's take this step further you know, we have somebody as our speaker this morning who broke the glass ceiling also to become the first black woman chief justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court. And we hope, let, let's just keep on hoping, and that means an awful lot of work, friends, to see to it that next year this time, we will be welcoming the first black woman U.S. Senator from North Carolina, Sherry Beasley. Sherry, you've got 20 minutes, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Rowan County Democrats. It's great to see everybody this morning. Jeffrey, thank you so very much. I am truly, truly delighted to be here with you this morning. And I think Jeffrey's right. Uh, this has been a great week for our country. Uh, and I'm super excited about that and love to talk with you about that and, and anything else you all want to discuss this morning in our time together. I am Sherry Beasley. I grew up in a home steeped in faith. My parents divorced very early in my life. My mom was amazing. She earned a PhD and was a university dean, uh, was a leader in her field, all while raising me. My husband, Kurt, and I have twin sons. We're 21 years old. And hopefully we have instilled the same values around hard work and faith and justice and giving back to our community uh, that she instilled in me. I've been in service to the people of North Carolina for nearly 30 years. Uh, it was not in vogue until very recently to say I was a, I was a former public defender, but I was a uh, former judge, former chief justice of the Supreme Court of North Carolina, and of course now candidate for U.S. Senate. You know, um, I'm speaking with people across our great state all of the time, and we should know that we live in the ninth largest state in the nation, where nearly 50% of us here earn less than $15 an hour. And so while we've been in this pandemic, people have been struggling, but frankly, people were struggling before the pandemic here in North Carolina. And it is time for that to change. So many people wanna know that the next United States Senator is gonna fight to lower costs. We need access to good quality healthcare, particularly in rural communities. We need good paying jobs coming to North Carolina. We need schools that will make sure that our students have uh, the futures that will uh, propel them to be whatever it is they wish to be. We need a strong economy and we need somebody who's gonna lead with integrity. Hopefully I'm really excited about this work that we're gonna do together to get me to the United States Senate to work for the people of the state. But I promise you upon getting there, I will take the same values around hard work, faith and integrity to the Senate that I've served with for 30 years here in this state. You know, I just wanna say this briefly and I'm, I'm gonna stop talking and then take your questions. Um, we talk a whole lot about winning in the state and how do we do it? And the reality is uh, we've always done that together. We know this will be a tough fight, but I've never backed down from a tough fight and I won't do that now. Thankfully, because of each of you, I've had two successful elections in 2008 and 2014, which was a tough year for Democrats all across North Carolina and across this country. And you all know, because you stood with me so tall, that in 2020, for the Office of Chief Justice, with 5.5 million votes cast, I fell short by 401 votes. But I was able to outperform because of your help and your support, every single statewide elected, uh, statewide elected official other than the governor. So we've been performing strong. We performed strong in 
rural communities and urban communities. And we know that this campaign really is about touching people in, in communities all across the state and leaving no vote unturned. So I'm really excited about this work we will do together. I'm excited about being here today. I'm excited about the work we will do. I am so thankful to each of you that because of your early support, um, I am now the presumptive nominee in this race. So that really gives us an opportunity to really be focusing so much of our efforts on the general election. So I thank you for having me and I'm glad to take your questions at this time. Okay, as qu questions arise, uh, p please uh, uh, Okay. I think I'm unmuted now. Oh, okay, as you have a question, you can put it in the chat or, uh, uh, you know, p please hit re reactions so we can see that you are raising your hand. I can't see everybody to raise their hand. Uh, uh, Oh, okay, Mary James uh, ha has her hand raised. No. Oh. Can you unmute um, her, please? Um, Sherry, it seems to me that you have um, just the personality uh, to help break the political poison and the gridlock that we face in the Senate and the House in general. and. I just wonder your thoughts about that. It just seems you will be entering a prickly hellhole. <laughs> and how do you navigate that? I mean, what, what part can you play, do you think, um, in dealing with the political polarization we face? You know, I've been a judge for uh, nearly 22 years and uh, of course, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. And I, I didn't just work with Democrats. I mean, I, I worked with Democrats and Republicans in very key issues throughout the judicial branch of government. And certainly as Chief Justice, the, uh, the budget for the judicial branch is fully dependent on uh, the support of the General Assembly. And you know what the makeup of the General Assembly is. I knew it was really important uh, to make sure that the courts could be in service in the way that they needed to be, uh, to fight hard for our budget. And that meant working with Republicans. But I'm also not running just to serve Democrats. I'm running to serve everybody in the state of North Carolina. And I think you're right. Uh, but I, I, I also know that as I speak with people across the state, and I'm speaking with uh, independents and Republicans as well, that people are so tired with all of the very many challenges we've had in North Carolina and throughout this country. They're so tired of the divisiveness. Um, and, and frankly, we know there's a concerted effort by some who are working really hard to divide us. But I truly believe that we're not really as divided as people would expect us to be or, or would, would wish us to be. I frankly think regardless of party affiliation, we all have the same common core values. We all care deeply about our families. We care deeply about working strong for our communities. We want a strong economy. We want good paying jobs coming to North Carolina. We care and share about really important common core values. And I think that's whether you're a person of faith, like I am or not, uh, we are decent uh, North Carolinians and really do want the same kinds of things. I certainly know we can be united even when we disagree because constructive disagreement really does make us better. I think people here in North Carolina wanna see us shift back to who we were. I often hearken the name and call the name proudly of Kay Hagan. And I frankly never knew that I needed to say and call out the characteristics that made her um, so special. And of course she was smart and wonderful and she was an amazing public servant for this state, but she was also a very decent woman and she uh, had decorum and civility and worked well with people. And, and, I, and I thought those were sort of the uh, kinds of characteristics we didn't need to state, but we're in a place now where we do need to harken back to our values and insist that the Senate get back to the job that we have hired them to do. And that really is to work for the people. I haven't met anybody who said, you know, I've got time for this bickering and party 
a, a partisan party, petty partisan politics. I haven't met anybody who said, you know, I'm going to put my life on hold while there's this stalemate in Washington and nothing is getting done. I've not met anybody like that. People have real challenges. And most of the people with whom I speak really care deeply about bread and butter issues. They're just trying to make it day to day. And so that's what people want to know that the next United States Senator from North Carolina is going to fight for, who will do so and speak the truth and lead courageously in doing that. And that's what I'm prepared to do with your support and your help. Thank you. I think my, Michael Stringer had his hand up next. Yes, uh, thank you for, for being here and, and taking the time out of your life to run for United States Senate. I really have two questions. On uh, one, uh, today, 10 young black men between uh, 16 and 24 are gonna lose their lives to uh, gun by firearm violence. That's 3,000, some odd, 36, almost 4,000 uh, this year. They make up over a quarter, 25%, some will say half of all the violent uh, gun, uh, deaths by gunfire. How will you take on the NRA and the gun lobby in the Senate to address this issue? The second one, part of my question is, because of this culture of violence, because of the violence that is, 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 is happening in our, uh, in our community, uh, what, what would you do in the United States Senate to uh, help with recidivism, the return of uh, uh, people to, to the prison system? Because once we're in the judicial system, now what? That, that, that's a recurring cycle of of incarceration that harms all of the, our community. Thanks again for taking my question. For the first question, um, and 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 do you share a concern that that so many people across North Carolina are deeply concerned about? Um, I, I think first of all, what that really means is that we need to. Oh, first of all, let me tell you this: I don't accept any corporate PAC money. I think it's people and voters who should decide the outcome of this election uh, and not corporations. And, and the second thing is we really need to make sure we are in consultation with public safety officials and law enforcement around how we deal with gun violence and who accesses guns as opposed to the gun lobbyists. We need to take that power and control out of their hands and, and they should not be leading the way on how we talk about and how we legislate gun safety. Certainly we need to have controls in place to make sure that responsible people can be in possession of firearms. I mean, I will tell you, I come from a family that hunts and they appreciate the rules and regulations that do not infringe at all of our own second amendment rights uh, to make sure that we're keeping people safe. And so I think that's the if first somebody thing. somebody wants to speak, their picture pops up. I, I think the other piece of that is um, around, around recidivism. I can tell you as Chief Justice, we focused a lot on that. A couple of things we did, uh, I made sure that we had um, substance use courts. We certainly know that substance use is up, unfortunately during the pandemic, as, long, as well as alcohol use. Uh, we know that uh, mental health is a real issue for our children. Uh, as well as for adults. And so we increased our number of mental health courts. We also increased our number of veterans courts. And so frankly, those things need to continue on the state level, but so many of those kinds of reforms need to happen on the federal level. First of all, we need criminal justice reform, which means that how we charge offenses needs to change. Um, I certainly know that we need to decriminalize uh, cannabis use. Uh, we certainly know that it will, number one, be a part of criminal justice reform, but we also know that it will uh, greatly impact and enhance our uh, agricultural options for farmers here in this country. So they're in the state and in this country. So there are a whole host of ways in which we really need to work hard uh, to uh, make sure that we're charging offenses in the right way, or frankly, not charging at all in many instances. And then also legalizing cannabis, but and also really having a reentry programs in our communities. We had a re some reentry programs before the pandemic and many of those shut down. Uh, because of COVID-19. It's important that we have more and more of those, of those programs to make sure that people really can get back on their feet uh, and be productive. People want to work. They want to make contributions uh, to their communities, and they also want to know that they can make a livelihood. 
I think our next question came from Pat Sledge. I'm trying to put these in order. What's the biggest challenge you face? We got to fight, y'all. Uh, we we got to fight hard. I'm so thankful uh, that because of you all and and a lot of good noise and good energy across the state, um, this is one of the top three best opportunities in the country uh, to expand the Democratic majority uh, in the Senate, which is super exciting. And so uh, I'm so thankful that people really do appreciate and understand the magnitude of this race. People really also understand that as we think about the issues that impact people here in our great state, they really are not partisan. Uh, if you do not have clean air and clean water, it's not a partisan issue. If you're impacted by the increased uh, hurricane season um, and, uh, and the, all the ways in which we uh, uh, impact, uh, uh, are impacted by uh, climate change, it's not a, a partisan issue. If you were one of the families uh, of more than 1 million in North Carolina that do not have access to broadband during a pandemic at a time when there was no telehealth and no tele, no, there is no telework, no telehealth. Um, and so many of our babies could not go to school. Uh, and with one third of our third graders uh, being retained last year, that's a lot of our kids. And for the educators here, you know what a pivotal year that third grade year is. It doesn't matter whether or not you're Democrat or Republican. These are issues that impact North Carolina. And people in the state want to know that the next senator is going to fight for, for, this, for this state and to fight to bring a better opportunity for the people who live here. Or Orland's question comes next. What can one say to rural Republican voters to convince them that Chief Justice Beasley is the better choice? You know, we, we stand with you. We've just over the last couple of days, we were in, and David may need to help me, we were in uh, Kinston, North Carolina, talking to machinists. We were in Beaufort County, North Carolina. We were in uh, um, Hertford, North Carolina. We were in Dare County, North Carolina. Uh, we were in, um, I'm missing two counties. We've been, we've been all over rural North Carolina and we've placed a lot of emphasis on our campaign in rural communities. We want you to know we stand with you. We know that there are a whole host of, of issues that impact all of North Carolina, but we also know that you're impacted very differently. And the thing we know also is that Washington and Pascatang, thank you, thank you, David. The thing we also know is that your Senator must share your priorities. There's funding that comes to the state, but we want to make sure you get your fair share so that you can, in the ways that you know that you individually, as a county and community, have specific needs, can address those uh, with, in healthy ways so that you have the support that you need. I think Al Higgins came next. Yes, good morning, Chief Justice, and thank you for joining us here in Rowan County this morning and for running for U.S. Senate. Um, is there any support as a U.S. Senator you could give to DA offices across North Carolina to revamp their services to address inequities we see in the cash bail system? You know, that's, it's, it's, it is, um, it's, it, it, I mean, courts certainly need more funding, that's mm -hmm. for sure. And much of that funding, frankly, just comes from the from the, uh, from, the, from the state, from the General Assembly. But there really are federal programs, particularly federal grants that um, help DA's offices specifically around victims' rights um, and, and in some ways criminal justice reforms, reform. But, but it also has to be a priority. Um, and so as we think about ways in which the federal government can support DA's offices and court systems to really think about how we can make sure that, that people can remain a part of a society and remain uh, productive. Mm -hmm. uh, we make have to make sure that that support is really available. Okay, thank you. Okay, another question here from Pam. Will you work to pass voting rights bills like John Lewis, voting rights, uh, et cetera, and the standardized federal election laws? You know, um, this is one of the key issues that we talk about across our state. and. Uh, and I will tell you in 49 states, including North Carolina, more than 500 pieces of legislation have been passed to suppress our right to vote. And so we saw here in North Carolina, the court case, our, Supreme, our state Supreme Court uh, ruled the initial uh, redistricting maps unconstitutional because they were heavily gerrymandered. And we know that we've now 
but now have new maps, but particularly gerrymandering dilutes the vote of people who live in rural communities. So part of the message I hope that you will lift up to people outside of this meeting, because I know you all uh, are, are active and get it, uh, is that it's important that if people are targeting your community to try to dilute your vote, there's something deeply troubling about that, that your vote really must carry the weight of the vote of people who live in urban communities. I will also tell you, um, it was 57 years ago that that saying, Mama, I just told you about, uh, was granted the right to vote because of the Voting Rights Act. And here we are uh, still fighting to secure the constitutional right to vote. I absolutely would have voted to support. Number one, it's insulting to all of us that the Senate didn't even wanna have discussion about it. But I certainly would have voted to support uh, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the Freedom to Vote Act. And we must insist as North Carolinians that the Senate act uh, quickly uh, because it is an abomination uh, that our voting rights have been attacked in this way. I think we have time for one more question. Reverend Turner, I saw you waving your hand in the air. Um, you know, okay, can we uh, uh, unmute Reverend Turner, please? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. You can't hear me. Yes, yeah. Judge Beasley. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. As a retired uh, uh, school teacher, I'm concerned, and I'm sure many others are as well, about the number of uh, good teachers leaving the classroom at a very critical time in our in our state. And I know it could very well be uh, not, it probably or it could very well be part of the pandemic. Pandemic could be a part, but be a part of it as well as mass and that kind of thing. But um, what can we do to retain, besides, in, in addition to uh, uh, heightening the salaries of teachers, but also encouraging uh, other um, people who, who want to go into teaching and those who do not want to go into teaching? How can we get those to encourage them to go into teaching, uh, knowing that there is uh, this lack of funding uh, on many of the parts of commissioners, et cetera, who uh, refuse to give teachers the kind of funding they need to for retention in the classroom. So as a yeah. judge, how would you address that problem? Well, as a senator, I'll tell oh, you yes, this, just, and so yeah. many, so many people are deeply concerned about this issue. And we know the value of, of teachers and educators uh, to, our, to, our, to, to our children. And, and the bottom line, funding is key. I think, I, I don't wanna get the statistic wrong, but I think we're roughly 47 uh, in teacher pay in the country. And we, uh, we, we vote our values, we spend our values, we must value teachers. They invest in our young people. They also need the resources. They need the opportunities for training. They need the resources. I certainly would vote to uh, extend funding for Title I schools that were underfunding, underfunded before the pandemic. But I, it's, it's heartbreaking that teachers feel underappreciated um, and are leaving our profession. We just must do more to support teachers, support, support schools, support families and support um, our students to make sure that they can get the education that they need. Okay, well, one more in the chat. Should Title 42 have been repealed? If yes, is COVID over? Question mark. If no, what else needs to be done to control it? Um, Title 42 uh, should remain in place until there is a plan uh, to address uh, the immigration of folks from other countries. We just need a plan and we need to be able to figure out how we're gonna go forward. Um, well, I, I think we need to say good luck on that one. Dee Dee is waving her hand. I see her hand up. Go, go ahead, go again, Dee Dee. I just wanted to share this. Thank you so <laughs> much for serving as, as one of your hosts for the 200th anniversary of the North Carolina Supreme Court. Thank you, and I'm working hard for you, Sherry. I appreciate it. Thank you. You always have the picture. You have the whole historical pictorial. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank 
the last so time much. I saw her, she had a picture of my sons when they were like 10 years old. So uh, she, Jeffrey she, has I, that in his 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 <laughs> right <now. laughs> I thank you all so very much for allowing thank me to be you. here. I'm really excited about what we will do together in 2022. We can certainly make this happen for North Carolina. And I thank you all so very much for your support. Let's work hard together from the top of the ticket to the bottom of the ticket. And let's win for North Carolina. Thank you all so very much. Absolutely. We'll be in touch about signs, et cetera, and more materials for you. So let's just stay in touch and keep working for you, OK? Awesome. Thank you all. Take good care. Enjoy your Saturday. Oh, OK. And, and, and you, good luck with all the rest of your uh, stops today as well. Thank you.